The Bharatiya Janata Party has decided to field its Tamil Nadu President K. Annamalai from Coimbatore for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Now, it is being said that the BJP's national leadership, which insisted that Annamalai should contest from Coimbatore, even though he was actually a bit reluctant. But the choice of Coimbatore is for Annamalai is interesting and also extremely significant. Hello and welcome to India Today So South. Dominated by the Dravidian majors of the DMK and AIA DMK, Tamil Nadu is seeing fresh competition this time from the BJP. And at the heart of it, as is evident, is K. Anamalaya, a former IPS officer who seems to be quickly establishing himself as a significant political player in the state. I'm going to be bringing you the reasons behind why Coimbatore and the Western Belt in Tamil Nadu occupies a central space in BJP's Tamil Nadu push, while also looking at the DMK and the AIADMK candidates and the caste calculations in Coimbatore. Now, there are three candidates who are fighting it out in Coimbatore. It's a battle between Annamalai, the BJP Tamil Nadu chief, Singai Ramachandran, the IT wing head of the AIADMK, and Ganapati B. Rajkumar of the DMK. He was a former mayor of Coimbatore, which is also, of course, known as Kovai locally. Before we get into really which candidate stands a better chance and why, let's first take a look at the demography and the voting patterns in Coimbatore, which perhaps could tell you what's going to happen this time. Now, for more than four decades, the Western Belt of Tamil Nadu, it's very popularly called as Kungu Nadu or Kungu Mandalam in Tamil, has without doubt been a bastion of the AIA DMK. It's played a significant role in who sits really at the throne of Fort St. George. I'm referring to Chennai, the seat of power of the Tamil Nadu government. Traditionally, the Gounders, who occupy a significant percentage of the population here and other castes, have always put their weight behind the AIA DMK. The Kongu Belt, which is in West Tamil Nadu, has traditionally been with the AIA DMK, and more than half of the AIA DMK's tally of 66 legislators in Tamil Nadu in 2021 came from this region. So it tells you how strong and powerful they are here. But the influence of the AIA DMK in this Kongu Nadu does seem to be weaning. The DMK and its alliance partners won all eight Lok Sabha seats in the 2019 general elections from this area. In Coimbatore, in the 2019 general elections, it was CPIM candidate PR Natarajan who won by a massive victory margin of nearly 1.8 lakh votes, overall securing 5,71,000 votes. Natarajan had defeated CP Radhakrishnan of the BJP, who finished second with 3,92,000 plus votes. What's also worth noting here is that Coimbatore constituency witnessed a 64% voter turnout in the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. It's a communally sensitive constituency. It's helped the BJP therefore cultivate a strong Hindu vote bank, which is not necessarily the case across Tamil Nadu. Coimbatore, importantly, is also home to a large North Indian workforce that's employed in the textile mills, think Tirupur. So all of this makes BJP believe that they have a strong chance in this particular seat. Now, by fielding Anamale, the BJP has taken that first step towards social engineering in a state where it's hardly got any presence, albeit for now. The BJP, therefore, is banking heavily on Anamale and him doing well in Coimbatore, particularly because he hails from the dominant community, the Gounders, as I mentioned earlier. The BJP feels that this predominantly business community has a kind of soft corner for them and will be looking for at least a section of their votes going towards the Saffron Party, thereby splitting the AIA DMK's vote bank. The BJP also hopes that Anamalai's clean image, his impressive record as a police officer, would help to kind of strike a chord with youngsters in the constituency. He's been going viral, of course, for all the statements and his attacks at the DMK. Now, Anamalai's success or failure will play a massive role in BJP's grand plans for Tamil Nadu, where they're attempting to completely cut off the Dravidian baseline. And they're looking at a long-term plan here in which Anna Malai plays a key, key role. Now, let's talk about the DMK's candidate. The DMK is definitely not taking things lightly this time around. It's leaving no stone unturned to ensure Anna Malai's defeat because they know a win for Anna Malai will kind of send across a message that the BJP is making in rules. And it's quite interesting to note that the ruling DMK, which sees this as a prestige battle, chose this time not to give the Coimbatore seat, which is known as the hub of Western Tamil Nadu, to any of its allies. Usually, this seat goes to the left. The DMK this time said, no, we're going to fight. And that's why it chose the candidate of Ganapati, keeping in mind that the DMK is 
contesting from here after 10 whole years. So, former city mayor Ganapati P. Rajkumar is being fielded. Important to note here, he was once with the AIA DMK. So, he's kind of being brought back from political hibernation to contest from Coimbatore. Now, the death of Jay Lalita played a significant role in Rajkumar actually switching sides to the DMK in 2020. He was with the AIA DMK when he was elected as Coimbatore mayor. So, this is, as I said, him coming out of political hibernation. So, who has the AIA DMK fielded? They fielded a very interesting candidate too, Singai G. Ramachandran, head of the party's IT wing. He's going to be fighting in Coimbatore. Ramachandran was actually expelled from the party and this was when the whole EPS-OPS battle was happening. He had chosen to side with O. Panir Selvam following Jailalita's death. However, he was later reinstated to the IT wing after the two factions merged. The AIA DMK also will be counting more or less on the same factor as the BJP which is their stronghold of the Gounder community. Why do the Gounders choose the AIA DMK repeatedly? Because it's the caste that Edipadi Parni Swami also belongs to. So there you have it. The electoral battle in Coimbatore will be one of the biggest and most watched contests, not just in Tamil Nadu, but across the country.